Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. Today I'd like to welcome our guest Claudia from the US who takes LDN for MCAS and POTS. Thank you for joining us today, Claudia. Sure. Happy to be here. Wonderful. Could you tell us what symptoms you were having and how long it was before you managed to get a diagnosis? Sure. Um, The main symptom was, well, symptoms were, it was terrible stomach pain and severe diarrhea. Like I could not eat anything. I couldn't go out with, if I went out with friends or family, which was pretty rare, I'd have to be in the bathroom like a half after half hour after I ate. So I would say that started when I was like 15 or 16. And then, um, I just turned 40 last month. So it took quite a long time. And I was diagnosed in 2016. Oh, and wow. then that's, yeah. Mm. So it was a long time and we tried everything in between, but really it was once I got the uh, mast cell and the POTS diagnosis that things really turned around for me. Mm-hmm. And what was your POTS like at that time? Um, I would get where um, I would try and stand, I would go to stand up and everything would go black and I cracked my eyebrow open, my cheek open, and my forehead open. And at that point was when they found out the diagnosis, like they did a tilt table test and did the um, orthostatic blood pressures. And they were like, okay, we think we know what this is. We think we can help you. And that's kind of how it happened. I was actually in the hospital when they made the final decision and knew what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in 2016, when you got these diagnoses, what happened next? What treatments were you offered? Um, I did the IVIG, the intravenous immunoglobulin, which I still do. And then the low-dose naltrexone, we did that. And then um, I also do just hydration fluids several times a week as needed because it seems like at some points it's worse than others. Like I live in St. Louis, so it's very humid and very hot in the summer. And so when it's like hot and things like that, things are worse. So it requires more fluids just to keep that blood volume up versus in the winter, I usually do a little better for whatever reason. So we increase those in the summer, typically. Mm-hmm. Do you have any antihistamines or? Yes, um, I do. I take um, Sertrazine, which I believe is Zyrtec, twice a day. I take Singular once a day. And then with the IVIG, I get, um, it's the Benadryl, uh, Famotidine, the prednisone or methylprednisolone, um, more IV fluids. And then um, I'm going to be starting, I've had some trouble recently, and I'm going to be starting once a week um, infusions and treatments with uh, the antihistamines, the higher dose antihistamines. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, when the intravenous, like you say, the higher dose, but they get into your system a lot quicker as well mm-hmm. don't they? yeah so, I think so. yeah back in 2016 once you had got all these different treatments going how long did it take you before you started to feel more <laughs> normal <laughs> <laughs> um I want to say so um my like IVIGs every four weeks And then I get the fluids every week. And I want to say it was within one or two treatments. I was much better. 
like the severe stomach pain and diarrhea that I'd had for years started to go away. Um, it was almost just like you could feel a little bit of life coming back. So I would say it was pretty fast. And then when I've had flare ups, you know, we've had to change things a little bit, but, um, it seems like it usually helps pretty mm -hmm. fast for me, especially mm -hmm. the fluids or the antihistamines, I think. So now you're going out and eating without running to the bathroom every five minutes. Yeah, it's better. We still have a little trouble with it, but it's much better than it was. And, you know, we just kind of laugh about it because what else can you do? <laughs> you know. So have you had any more occurrences where you've fallen over and hurt yourself? No, actually, I haven't. Like now, if I get it, it's like I feel a little dizzy. But it doesn't get nearly as bad as that, which I've been very fortunate. Mm. That's good. Yeah. So what would you say to other people who are desperately seeking a diagnosis, a name for the condition they have with all the symptoms that come with MCAS and POTS? What would be your advice to them? I would say just don't give up because you know something is not right, that something is wrong and you know your body best and just keep fighting because you'll come across a lot of people who will write it off and say, oh, it's all in your head or just get over it. You're fine and you're not. So just keep fighting just keep fighting. That's the best advice I can give you because eventually you'll get to the right person and they will listen and they will be able to help you. Mm -hmm. And how did it make you feel not being believed, knowing how sick you were and people just dismiss you? It was really hard and really frustrating. And, you know, even now, people who don't understand it or don't care to understand it, they will still write it off, even though there's the diagnosis, there's the treatment. And um, it's still very frustrating, but you just have to put your foot down and say, this is what's wrong. And I don't know, I've been very lucky that I do have the right doctor and he's fought right alongside me as a team. And you got to get to somebody like that. Did you have to change your diet or start on a, a regime of supplements? Um, I, yes, I have changed my diet. Like for example, dairy for me has to be totally cut out because it'll make it way worse um things like that um low fat diet for me that helps but um I feel like I've been on every diet known to man like gluten free like all the ones and it was really difficult to find exactly what worked but once you find it like I have been doing the dairy free since maybe like August and I find it's made a big difference what are you still gluten free? Uh, no, um, they did um, the blood test and everything. And they said, well, we don't think it's that. So after like six or eight months, I couldn't take it. I hate gluten free. So I just went back to the regular life and it's OK. <laughs> yes, it is. It is tricky, but for some people, um myself included I can't tolerate gluten yeah I have a couple of friends like that and for them it works great and the thing for me it was like so hard to find things because I've tried it a couple times over you know since 2016 and I want to say even before that and just when it wasn't helping 
you know, we're like, okay, that one's not working. So let's put that back in and take this out. And that's how we arrived at taking the dairy out and everything. So it was a long time coming, but it's a hard one. Mm -hmm. So what else would you like to add? Um, I just think, I know sometimes it's just, it can be so hard, but just have faith, like the right people will come along and someone will help you. Like, don't give up. That's the biggest thing. Don't give up. Yeah. Like my, um, family and friends, they're pretty amazing. Uh, I have two sisters, uh, two brother-in-laws and my parents and they, have and aunts and uncles and stuff like that and they've stood by me the whole time like they've done everything they can um they'll adjust what we're eating for dinner on holidays even if it means making two meals or separate things they come to the hospital they come and like my aunt and I will go and get um also my sister and I will go and get like manicures while I'm, you know, getting treatment or whatever, just because it lifts my spirits and they're always really good about it and supportive. And, you know, they don't say cruel things or make fun of me when I have to leave the table for 30 minutes when we're out to dinner, they just wait patiently. And my friends are pretty amazing too, like that they stuck by me and they all come to visit or, you know, text and call and everything. So I'm very lucky. And I know that for sure. And also I have a little dog named Fritz and another little dog named Violet. And they're very good, like stress relievers too. You have pets, they're good. It's funny you should say that. So many people with this, these conditions do find that dogs help tremendously. Um, and there was research done on stroking dogs and how it calms calms you down. Uh, pretty amazing. Are you able to walk your dogs? Um, I'm supposed to be better about walking than I am. Like, I do sometimes, but Fritz, he's a little wiener dog and he's so stubborn. He gets to the end of the yard and turns around, so <laughs> I don't get too far, but I try my best. <laughs> and also, I don't know, I find like walking's kind of hard for me sometimes, especially when the weather is warm. Mm. So like I can go a little ways and then I have to come in and take a break and then I'll go back out later and come back, you know, go back and walk him a little more. But yeah, he's he's funny little guy. <laughs> I should think uh, early mornings and late evenings are better for you, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for having shared your story with us today. Yeah, sure. No problem. Thank you. I has been prescribing LDN since 2005, and I've seen the wonders, and I keep on seeing them especially in hard to diagnose conditions. They're not that hard to do, but once you know about mast cell activation syndrome, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, you'll find that 17% of your friends or relatives have one or more of these conditions and you can help them we're making a documentary to wake up the medical community, to educate the population, but we need funding. So please fund whatever you can afford, no matter how little, www.mcasfund.com. That's mcasfund.com. Any questions or comments you may have, 
please email me linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.